Hello and welcome to next tutorial of ASP.NET and Data Controls. In this tutorial we will going to be exploring Grid View Control. Grid View Control is one of the controls that allow you to not only display the data in grid but also allows you to update the data, delete the data and do some of the other operations on the data. So let me grab the Grid View Control and drop it on the form and link it up to the SQL data source. Now I can do some of the options that we have done in the past such as being able to auto format being able to enable paging and these are some of the options that we have done before in this case by default it displays 10 items per page since we only have four records, if you want to experience paging, we can do three per page. That way we can have two pages. The main difference between the grid view and the others that you have noticed that allows pagination, that the others only allow one record to be seen at any given time, be it a form view or be it a details view. Grid view allow you to look at multiple records at a time with the help of pagination. So if I change it to three, per page. Now let me test this so that you can see the output. And here we have two pages. The first page with three records and the second page with one record. And you can apply the pagination. So this is one of the features of the grid view control that I wanted to introduce being able to paginate. Another feature of this approach is that you can also enable sorting. So let me turn that feature on and let's try that feature. So now this will going to automatically underline each one of the column headings and make them clickable. So if I click on salary, for example, now all the records will going to be in the ascending order for salary. Clicking on it again, we're going to display the records in the descending order of salary. Similarly, I can do that with names, ascending order, descending order. And similarly, I can do that with the employee ID, ascending order, descending order. So that's another feature available to us. One other feature that you can implement over here is that you can also enable selection. So if you check to enable selection, it automatically adds this link in front of each one of the rows. And the advantage of doing this is that if you would like to pay a little attention to each one of the records, instead of you having to select by using mouse like this and going all the way till the end of the record, for the readability and viewability, you can simply click on the select link and it highlights or selects that record. So it's, an, it's a great help, especially when you are trying to show and demonstrate. So it's, it's, it's an awesome option to exercise for that perspective. So it adds a column to your grid view and allows you to control the properties of that column. So this is the column that it adds. These are the properties that you can control for the grid view. And let's add more properties to this grid view by simply going under the add new column. The reason I'm going through this approach, if you are working with different editions of, SharePoint, uh, of uh, Visual Studio, you may see certain options available right over here and certain options may not be available right over here. So for the sake of simplicity, and the option that I'm exercising is available in all versions of Visual Studio. I'll simply click on Add New Column. So Add New Column allows me to add a column which doesn't already is part of this control. If I want to add a column that is part of this control, then I will be going under Edit Columns versus Add New Column. So when I go under Edit Column, here I have a predefined command field called edit, update, and cancel. And here I have my controls, the dynamic fields that are currently listed on my grid. So I can click on either one of them and it will going to load the properties of that item and then I can work with the properties of that item. So for now I would like to simply add this one. So if I would like to work with the properties of the items, I need to first of all add them under selected fields. Only then I can click on them and work with it. So as you have noticed, we have a select over here. We can control the properties of select. Currently it is showing as a link. 
I have an option of changing it to an image. I have an option of changing it into a button. So that allows me to customize it a little bit. Then I have some other options available to me in the list in terms of the viewability of these items and I can also apply some styling to it. Similarly, here is my edit, update and cancel. This will going to give me multiple options. So therefore, that's why you see there is multiple text. The type in which it will be displayed will be link by default, but once again, I can change it to a button approach or I can change it to an image approach. And I have the text for each one of those links that will going to show up on the grid view. And some of the other properties are exactly the same as before. Before we explore this any further, let's click OK here. And this will going to edit, bring up the edit link. And let's try to test this. Let me go into auto format and change the look and feel and now let me test it so here you get an edit button edit link the moment you click on the edit link notice the entire row has text boxes showing up for the last two fields but not for the first field which is the primary key in my table I'll show you why it is not showing it for the first one but before we do that if I were to update any of these fields and click update my page will currently fail and we're going to give me an error message because I still have not configured my SQL data source to handle the update operation it can only handle the select operation for now but before we move forward with that approach let me once again change the format back to a different one because the last format was not very visible in terms of employee IDs as you would have noticed and now I will show you why employee ID is being displayed in read-only format so let me switch over to edit columns let me click on employee ID and here I have a read-only property for employee ID because it's a primary key set to true. So whenever I will try to edit and update the data, all other data items will be updatable by default except for this one item. Similarly, employee name, if you notice, the read-only property is set to false. And so is same is true for salary. Read-only property is set to false false now let's click OK here and that was the reason the employee ID was coming out as read only and now let's configure our SQL data source so that we can successfully update the fields so let's click on SQL data source and let's scroll down in the properties window and you're gonna find a property called update query the update query property gives you an ellipse that you can click and now you can build your query you can actually type your query if you'd like update employees and then you can write your entire update statement like this if you don't want to do that you can simply click on query builder and query builder will ask you which table would you like to work with I'm choosing employees table adding it to the list closing the list and now I'm picking up the fields that I want to set means I want to be able to update so I'm checking on the fields that I would like to be able to update I'm not checking employee ID because I do not want anybody to be able to update the employee ID all the records will be updated based on employee ID so here it gives me the code snippet for my update query I can click OK it's not a complete query because it's missing values but however it now writes it for me now what I need to do is complete this query I cannot put certain values here because otherwise all of my updates will going to only impose those values. What I now need to do is I need to generalize this so that whenever user makes a change in a box and click update, it should then run this query against that record and be able to update the data in that field. So for that purpose, what we use what we call parameters. So parameters are used with an at symbol and parameters are given the exact same name as the field name. This is how Visual Studio then maps the parameters to the fields. If you try to give different names, then it won't be able to map it correctly. Similarly for salary, we're going to do at salary. 
Now I need to be writing my where clause, otherwise all my employee names and all my salaries will going to be set to that value. So I'm going to be doing my filter over here with the where clause, and my filter is based on my employee ID field. Once again, I will going to use a parameterized name of employee ID with an at symbol. So I've added these parameters. Since I do not know the names of the controls that comes forward whenever I click the edit button, they are text boxes, but we don't know the underlying names. We take the parameterized approach. Now, one last step or two last steps needed to be done. First of all, I need to refresh parameters. So all these parameters are now registered with the query, and now it can do the mapping. The second thing I need to do is for each one of these parameters, I need to be able to set a property, which is gunword empty string to null to false. Otherwise, what happens sometimes is when you click an update, so any of the fields that you're not updating will going to be set to null because it passes an empty string for that particular field. So that is why we are only uh, want to um, update those fields for which the user uh, provides a value. All of the fields should remain with their initial value. We'll try to do the same for the salary field as well. Okay. And now we will going to click OK here. And this has set up our SQL data source to receive an update query. We're now going to run it in a web browser. And now you will be able to click the edit option and be able to get the text boxes. Let me zoom in here so that you can see the output. So if I change this name, and press update. Here you go, the name has now been changed. Similarly, if I click on one of these salaries and I want to update the salary and click update, the salary gets updated. Or if I want to update both fields, and click update now both fields can be updated if I go back to if I go forward to the second page come back to the first page all the values are preserved so it actually has successfully executed the update statement for me so it's a great control in case you want to have a one place where you can display the data you can select the data you can edit the data you can update the data and you can delete the data so it's just one place it's a great control extremely condensed saves you a lot of coding time hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial catch you in the next one thank you very much for watching